welcome to another edition of the Future Questions Show, the part of my channel where I ask and answer questions about the future. Coming up this time, I'm going to say a bit about the singularity, a bit about the future of human waste, and I'm going to reveal the winner in my recent 3D printing competition. So to start us all off, I'll go to the question I asked last time, which is, are we approaching the singularity? Now, Several people gave answers to that question. I think probably it was summed up in, in a positive way, mostly by Ian um, Polar CP, uh, who said, I believe we are heading for the singularity because we're evolving and learning incredibly fast. Uh, he points out over the past 150 years, we've progressed incredibly in terms of, you know, as he puts it, from light bulb to large hadron collider to international thermonuclear experimental reactor, and we've created synthetic life. Uh, but if we don't do anything about our lifestyles, we're going to head towards decline and either destroy ourselves or, or nature will destroy us with something like a pandemic. And I'm absolutely certain that what he sums up there is absolutely right. We've got this incredible technological possibility and we've got the risk of, of focusing too much on the short term and, and, and being destroyed. Um, the erudite polymath put it in, in a similar way. Um, the mega and micro trends we have within nano, bio, info, cogno, nanotechnology, biotechnology, information technology, cognitive science, um, means we are heading towards a singularity and each development builds on a previous development. You may be aware of a book by Kevin Kelly, the guy who started Wired magazine, who talks about the idea of the technium, the idea that every technology builds on the next technology. So you can't have the internet without computers, you can't have computers without electronics, you can't have electronics without electricity, etc. And, and Kevin Kelly's idea is each of these technologies developed built on the previous one and technology in itself is becoming something which is, which is driving change. And that's very much what um, you, you can see in these comments here. Other comments on this, Melis256 uh, pointed out that probably, you know, we are heading towards a singularity because all the technologies will, will tie together, as I just talked about. Um, I also love the comment from um, Zarkov45. As for the singularity, it will take you know, at least six to seven hours, almost there. Um, and certainly one of the arguments you could make about the singularity is we have got there. You know, the impossible becoming possible is happening all the time. You know, the fact I can sit here um, in Nottingham in the UK in front of a, a piece of green paper talking to you around the world using special effects technology that didn't exist in the movie industry not that many years ago, uh, it, it, it's amazing. We are doing incredible things with technology today, um, not just in terms of a technology itself, but linking minds with it, which is, which, which is an amazing thing. Sika Oski Oporanku, if I can get that right. Um, singularity, not even close. In order for a singularity to be achieved, most of the planet needs to be in it. And that idea came back from two comments, very nicely put by Doran D2. Um, the barrier of culture and values is going to be th the critical thing. He talks about how, as a scientifically um, mindset individual, it's difficult to express some kinds of, of, of beliefs to someone who's got a deep religious conviction and, and vice versa. And therefore, one of the challenges we face is um, misunderstanding, miscommunication because of, of belief systems. Um, as he puts it, after that, a greater barrier to overcome than the barrier of language is the barrier of culture and values. And I think that's one of the things we tend to forget with the singularity argument. Um, yes, it's about new technology and technology, building on technology and doing amazing things. But ultimately, society has always been founded on two pillars. The pillar of its technologies, whether those are technologies we use to build the pyramids or the technologies we use to go to the moon, but also the narrative, the story, the, the belief system of society that determines how we use technology. And I guess for me, the issue we really face is that will we reach singularity? Will we continue to reach singularity in terms of new technologies that make the impossible possible? Yes, I'm sure we will. Um, will we reach a point where all of our problems are solved and we get to a utopia because of that? Probably not. And the thing that will hold us back, the thing that might lead to our ultimate destruction in our current form, won't be whether we've got the technology or not, or even having it and using it to destroy ourselves. It will be that narrative society. It'll be a lack of communication between peoples uh, and, and cultures. Um, that's something, as you may remember, I discussed quite a bit in my, in my video about the, the new narrative, as well as in the singularity or decline video. 
Right, let's take some entirely different questions. This one here from Yuan Albaran. Hello, I'm from Mexico City, which is extremely polluted. Do you think there could be technology in the future that could help us clean the air in the city? Um, yes, I, I think there will. It might be incredibly sophisticated technology, like nanotechnology that can, that can clean the air. Um, or more fundamentally, it'll be using organic stuff. Um, this is put very well by this comment here from Spinas Fu. I know one technology, plants in every roof, balcony, street, etc., would clean the place up, make it look great. I'm sure that that's absolutely the case. A similar comment we got here was from Warmax, who asked, what sort of excrement sewage system will we have in the future? And particularly went on to talk about the fact that our current system of lots of absurd pipes underground is, is not very sensible. Um, I picked this particular comment out, um, and some of you even labelled it as spam, which is terribly uh, unfortunate. I picked this comment out because very recently um, I live in a block of flats and we've been dealing with rats which have been getting into the walls and, uh, and the roof and they've been coming in through the drains. So I spent a lot of time um, looking at footage like this of, um, of the drains that feed our properties that I've never really thought about before and realising what, what indeed a daft system it is. Um, and I think one of the things that will happen in the future as, as we learn to um, you know, achieve more with less is we won't simply just dispose of human waste as if it's not, not a potentially valuable resource. So things like biodigesters to make, make, make methane from, from human and waste is certainly a possibility. Um, if you look in um, one of my favourite books of recent years, which is um, The Vertical Farm by Dixon Despomia. I've just realised this has got a green cover, so I've no idea what you're actually seeing on screen right now as I'm in front of a green background. But um, Dixon Despomia talks a lot about how we could make better use of human waste um, by building vertical farms. Um, for example, to process brown water, there's about a billion litres a day, I think it is, comes out of New York, New York City alone that has to be processed. Um, we could use that to help grow plants. We could feed it um, to synthetic algae to turn to plastics and, and biofuels. And we could use things like um, plasma arc gasification systems, which is where you take waste um, in a powdered format, you introduce it into an electrical arc, um, creates a lot of heat, you can power a turbine, and yes, you use energy to run, run the electrical arc, but you get a lot more energy out, about, about six to one. So I think human waste is going to become something we don't just go and try and get rid of it and flush it down the system, it gets jammed up and and full of rodents, uh, it starts to become a valuable resource that we'll be using to um, feed to synthetic bacteria to turn into polylactic acid or other plastics or, 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 or biofuels fairly soon. Right, that moves us on to the uh, results of the 3D printing competition, where I asked the question, why will 3D printing be revolutionary? Lots of people answered that, over 100 entries to that competition to win a copy of, of my latest book. 3D printing, the next industrial revolution. Um, difficult to pick out the, the winner. I found myself sitting there going back and forth and back and forth. Um, so I thought I'd highlight a few of the really good comments about 3D printing people made and then show you the runner up and, and, and the winner. In terms of the comments, uh, one of the first ones I liked was this one from Taylor Rance. Can I just have the book please? Great comment, nice try, but um, no. Um, next few comments I, I really liked is one from um, John Giscom. Uh, it will be revolutionary because it will once again unearth and, and rekindle humanity's ultimate purpose to, to, re re to reawaken sorry, our ability to create. 3D printing from Hergolani, it will revolutionise the world due to one simple thing, turning consumers into producers. That has to be true. Benedict Noanquo, similar idea, 3D printing will narrow the gap between reality and dream. Chandler Jones, I particularly like the comment, it will give us the potential to eliminate homelessness, allowing us to 3D print out houses on site and snap them together. Something that's already starting to be experimented with, with something called the Kamer Maker in, in, in Europe. Bill Gao, 3D printing will trump Amazon.com, the same way Amazon.com trump bricks and mortar shops. A very interesting comment to read on, on this, this particular morning when Amazon has just launched a 3D printing section on Amazon.com. How long will it be before Amazon is offering an online 3D printing service? 
Other really nice comments, Zorion 18, uh, the technology of the millennium. Imagine a massive printer building entire spaceports or even entire habitable planets. I must admit, for the first person I've, I've actually um, seen raise the issue of 3D printing entire planets. Fan, 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 fantastic idea. We could do a Death Star from Star Wars while, while we're at it, perhaps. Finally, Armedi1, I love this comment, we'd be able to print a steak that never moon. Back to food printing, something I will return to in another video not that far into the future. So then, um, let's move on to the runners up. Two of these in no particular order, Dave, Coy, Kendall. People will essentially be able to live their li entire lives in possession of a single lot of raw material that can be printed, broken down, reprinted, etc. Um, brings us a little bit back to the human waste thing. Rather than waste and getting rid of it, we'll keep reusing our waste to make new stuff on and on and on by reprinting it. Something we might also do, of course, with nanotechnology. And the other runner up here was M1 America. 3D printing will allow personal and local manufacturing to prosper. The means of production will be shifted to the people. This may restore the narrative of the Industrial Revolution again. We're back to narrative. Every man or woman with a good idea will be able to tinker with it in their basement. Um, he sees a flood of, of innovation coming. Fantastic thing. But all of those comments, while I say great, weren't the one I picked as the winner. This is the one I picked as the winner. From Daniel Ballard, 3D printing will be revolutionary because it will change the way we all relate to the stuff that we use to live our lives. Specifically, from having to adapt ourselves to what others make to tailoring our stuff to our own particular needs and tastes. We'll each be our own brand, no longer dependent for identity on big name consumer and product branding. Um, for me, that comment pulled in all those other ideas about means of production and, and empowerment, all that stuff that comes from 3D printing. So I've contacted um, Daniel um, and um, um, as soon as he sends me his contact details, I'll send him off the, the copy of the book. Right, so we must have, of course, a question for next time. And the question for next time is, will you fear or welcome the rise of the robots? We live on a planet which has already got over 8 million things that can be classed as a robot, making cars, disposing of bombs, um, uh, going around our floors, potentially uh, um, hoovering things up. Um, but in the next maybe 20 years, we're likely to start to see humanoid robots, things like Hondas, Asimo, literally walking amongst us, being relatively smart. Is that something you're, you're looking forward to or something you think could go horribly, horribly wrong? So, if you want to talk about that, please leave a comment down in, in the comments section here and we'll, we'll talk about those next time. Other than that, thanks for listening to this edition of the Future Questions Show and I hope to talk to you again very soon.